this is Samantha Cambo with the DuPont Building Knowledge Center, and we provide science you can build on. In this two-part series, I'll first cover thermal performance basics, then I'll go into how you can use assembly U-factor tables to determine insulation thicknesses required to meet energy code. Now that I've covered the basics in part one of this video series, I'll now show you how to use a prescriptive approach to comply with energy codes and determine required insulation thicknesses. Last time, we discussed that R-value and U-factor are two properties that give you a sense of how well a material or an assembly of materials either resist or allow heat flow. We also cover the impact of thermal bridging, which causes a large reduction in the cavity insulation R-value due to the conductivity of the studs it's framed by. This all ties in to why a continuous insulation, also known as CI, placed outboard of the studs is an important part of creating an energy efficient building. The International Energy Conservation Code, or IECC, gives the option to use the ASHRAE 90.1 standard when showing energy code compliance. With this, I'll show an example of how you'd determine the minimum required insulation thicknesses for a commercial building using both the ASHRAE 90.1 standard as well as the IECC. Say you're designing a steel stud commercial building in Austin, Texas, and are using the prescriptive approach to comply with the 2018 IECC. The first step is to determine your climate zone if not already known. Using the U.S. climate zone tables found either in the ASHRAE standard or in the energy code, you'd see that Austin is categorized under climate zone 2A. If you'd taken this climate zone and wall type info and jump straight to the IECC R value table shown here, you might have assumed that the only way to meet code for a metal frame building in climate zone 2 was to use R13 insulation in the cavity and R5 continuous insulation. However, this is not the case. As long as the equivalent maximum U factor is satisfied, which I'll show you how to determine shortly, there are other R value combinations possible. The great thing about this approach is that it gives more flexibility in terms of where you place your insulation and what thicknesses are required. So to show how this can be determined, the first step is finding out the maximum allowable U factor for the thermal envelope based on the building's location and the wall type. For this steel frame building, for example, go to table C402.1.4 in the 2018 IECC, which shows that an assembly U factor of 0 0.077 or less is required for this building type and climate zone 2A. Now that we know that the maximum allowable U factor is 0 0.077, the final step is then to use the assembly U factors for steel frame walls table shown here in ASHRAE 90.1 to figure out what cavity and continuous insulation thicknesses help meet this. Using this table, you can see that one option is to use R13 insulation in the cavity and R5 continuous insulation as shown in the previous energy code R value table. And shown here highlighted in yellow, you can see that by increasing the CI and cavity insulation thicknesses, this would also result in a lower U factor than 0.077 then you know that the associated R values would also be compliant options here. What if instead you wanted to completely eliminate the cavity insulation altogether and use only CI on this project? This is a great approach to help simplify construction, saving on time and labor, and it can also help mitigate condensation issues in the cavity. Let's use the same table to see the minimum CI thicknesses required to achieve the 0 0.077 or less U factor while you put nothing in the cavity. So starting at none under the cavity insulation column, you then go horizontally across and you'll notice that the first point at which we get to a U factor of 0 0.077 or less is when we have an R11 continuous insulation value. So what does this mean? By using only two inches of DuPont Thermax insulation with an R value of 13, or about two and a half inches of DuPont brand styrofoam extruded polystyrene insulation with an R value of 12.5, with nothing else in the cavity, you would satisfy the insulation thicknesses to meet energy code on this project. To learn more about DuPont's wide range of continuous insulation options, please visit building.dupont.com.